Have you ever wondered how we get gold, not from a riverbed, but from solid rock? Well, today we're diving into the absolutely incredible industrial journey that transforms a literal mountain of rock into a single bar of pure gold. It's a story of brute force, clever chemistry, and a scale that's almost hard to believe. So let's just ask the big question right up front. How do you do it? I mean, how do you turn a mountain of just rock into a bar of gold? It sounds impossible, right? You can't see the gold, you can't just pick it out. The answer, believe it or not, all comes down to a surprisingly elegant, massive chemical process. And here's the part that really gets me. We are talking about concentrations of less than one gram of gold per ton of rock. Okay, to put that in perspective, for every thousand kilograms of rock that gets moved, they're looking for an amount of gold that weighs less than a single paperclip. It's totally invisible. So pulling it out, well, it's a modern marvel. All right, so first things first, before any of the really cool chemistry can happen, the rock itself has to be prepared. This first stage is all about mechanics, just getting the ore into the perfect shape for what's coming next. This prep happens in two really important steps. First, all that ore gets crushed down into little pieces, smaller than an inch across. Why? You're just trying to create as much surface area as possible so the chemicals have more to work with. The second step is something called agglomeration. See, if you just have a bunch of fine dust and clay, it would turn into a muddy, waterproof mess. So they tumble the crushed ore with a bit of cement to create these stable little clumps. That ensures our magic liquid can actually trickle through the entire pile. And now we get to the heart of the whole operation, the cyanide leach. This is where the real magic happens. This is how you convince solid gold to literally dissolve into a liquid. And when I say this is big, I mean it's immense. The prepared ore is stacked into these massive piles or heaps that can be six to 10 meters high. That's as tall as a three-story building. And of course, these heaps are built on top of specially designed pads with these super heavy duty liners to make sure not a single drop of that valuable solution leaks out. So once the heap is built, a very, very dilute cyanide solution is slowly dripped all over the top. It's not a flood. It's a slow, steady, controlled process. The best way to picture it is like a giant industrial scale drip coffee maker, where the water is slowly working its way through the grounds. So what is the cyanide actually doing? Well, it's not just cleaning the gold. It's much cooler than that. In the presence of oxygen from the air, the cyanide reacts with the solid gold particles and creates a totally new water-soluble molecule called a gold cyanide complex. And that is the absolute key to this whole thing. It transforms solid, stubborn gold into something that can just be carried away by water. Now, this is not a fast process. You could have patience. That cyanide solution has to slowly percolate all the way down through that 10 meter high heap, dissolving those tiny flecks of gold as it goes. A single leach cycle for one of these giant heaps can take anywhere from 30 to 90 days. Okay, so after weeks and weeks of waiting, a gold-rich liquid, they call it the pregnant leach solution, starts to collect at the bottom of the heap. Awesome. But now the challenge totally shifts. How in the world do you get that dissolved gold back out of the water? The answer is so clever. It's a process that uses activated carbon. The pregnant solution gets pumped into these huge columns that are packed with carbon granules. Now, activated carbon is incredibly porous, and it basically acts like a magnetic sponge, but just for the gold cyanide complex. The gold literally sticks to the carbon. And the now barren, gold-free liquid? It flows out the other end, ready to be recycled right back to the top of the heap to go dissolve some more gold. So, we've caught the gold on the carbon, which is great, but it's still not something we can actually see or hold. This final stage, this is the most dramatic part of the whole journey. This is where all that chemistry finally produces a real, tangible, high-value product. Let's walk through this final transformation, because it's pretty cool. First, the gold-loaded carbon is stripped using a hot caustic solution that basically washes the gold right back off, creating this super concentrated liquid. Second, that liquid undergoes electro-winning. They run an electric current through it, which plates the gold onto steel wool, forming this thick, muddy sludge. And finally, that sludge is dried out, mixed with some stuff called flux to help separate impurities and melted in a furnace at incredibly high temperatures. And this, this is the payoff. What pours out of that furnace is called a dory bar. It's not pure gold yet, but it's pretty darn close, usually around 80 to 95% gold, with the rest being mostly silver. But after that immense journey, we finally have something we can actually see and hold and weigh. 
But the story doesn't actually end when the gold is poured. You know, a really critical part of modern mining is environmental responsibility, making sure that the site is safe after the whole operation is done. It's all about closing the loop. And you know, the contrast between an active site and a closed site is just night and day. Once all the gold is extracted, the heap is rinsed with clean water or special agents that neutralize and detoxify any leftover cyanide. Then the whole thing is capped with soil and revegetated, transforming what was an active industrial site back into a stable, reclaimed landscape. And what about our beautiful Dorbe bar? Well, even at 95% purity, it still has one final stop on its journey. It's shipped off to a specialized refinery where the last bits of silver and other impurities are removed, purifying it to that 99.99% standard we see in investment-grade gold bullion. So there you have it. What started as less than a gram of minvisible metal, scattered throughout a ton of rock, ends up as a bar of nearly pure gold. It's just an amazing testament to how modern chemistry can unlock the treasures of an ancient metal. It really makes you wonder, what other invisible resources are out there, hiding in plain sight, just waiting for the right process to unlock them?